Hello there guys. So as usual, I would like you to start with a do now for me, please. So make sure you've got a pen, pencil or some paper to jot down your answers to these questions. The top three there are based off last session. So pause the video now for me and attempt those questions. And can you have a look at these answers for me? Mark your answers, correct it, pause it if you need a bit of extra time on that. But just have a look at marking those for me, please. So in today's session, our objectives is that you'll be able to identify the factors that affect a species populations. So the number of different organisms within that population. So how many foxes do you have? How many um, rabbits do you have in a certain area? You will also be able to describe what is meant by the term biomass, which ties heavily with this idea of food chains and food webs, which we looked at last session. Now, as I said in the last session, I said I would put the key words in kind of early on in the, in the video or the PowerPoint so you can kind of look back and reflect on those. So you want to take a little bit of time and just read through those, make sure you're kind of familiar with those words and then move on to the next part of the video. So listed there are four of the factors that can affect how many individuals there are in a population. Now, these can also link in quite heavily with each other as well. So let's say, for example, you're a rabbit. What kind of things might have an impact on how many rabbits that there are? Well, the amount of food available would be really important. If there's not a lot of food available, then you're not going to survive very long. So the number of rabbits would decrease. Also, if there was lots and lots of food available, that means that that could support more rabbits or more organisms. And therefore, you would have a higher number over time. You'd have more births and more surviving to have babies. So then the amount of food would mean the population could change. But on the other side of that, if you're a rabbit and there are lots of predators nearby, then you're going to struggle to have a very high population. So things like foxes and birds of prey will hunt rabbits. The more predators there are, the less rabbits there'll be. That population will be lower. On the other side to that, if you are a fox, for example, you don't really have to worry about predators. So that's not going to be something that affects you. What you do have to be careful of, though, is the number of rabbits available for you to eat. So that kind of links into that food availability. Disease is one that can have a bit of an impact as well. If there's a disease going around that kind of affects rabbits and makes them quite poorly or unable to survive, then they're not going to have a very large population. So disease can have a big impact on that as well. For example, there was a disease that went around a good couple of years ago that affected our wild rabbits. There aren't many rabbits out in the wild and they've only just started to recover, apparently. Competition's a big one as well. Now, there's a bit of information at the bottom of there talking about competition because there's two types of competition. You can have competition between two different species. And the example I've given there is competition between lions and hyenas. They both eat similar food and hunt the same sort of animal. So there's a bit of competition there. If they're both hunting for the same animal, there's going to be less available for everyone. On the other side of that, so there's competition within a species. So I've used lions as an example again there. If you've got two groups of lions that are living too close to each other, they'll be eating the same food, which means there'll be less overall for both groups. So competition can be quite important because it has a big impact on how many species and how many individuals can survive within a certain area. Now, I'd like you to look at this video clip for me and watch it for about six minutes. It does a really good way of showing you what we mean by the different factors that can affect the size of a population. Now, the video is about 20 minutes long. I only really want you to watch the first six minutes. However, I do think it's quite a good video. So if you want to watch the full video, that's all up to you. There are some good parts there. But the part that I want you to take away from that is at least the first six minutes. Now, if you look to that video, you might have seen this keyword of biomass. It's one of our objectives for today. Now, biomass is the total quantity or weight of organisms in a given area or volume. So when we talk about volume or given area, for example, volume could be to do with the amount of water. So ocean creatures or um, how much they weigh or the number of those. OK, now 
we're often talking about the amount of energy that has passed up through that pyramid as well. You that see that pyramid shape that's on there. The higher up the biomass pyramid, the less biomass there is. So, for example, there is often going to be less owls than there would be snakes. There's going to be less snakes than there would be those sparrows, and there'll be less sparrows than there would be grasshoppers. Which makes sense because an owl would probably eat two or three snakes a day or whatever, how often they need to eat. If there was too many owls, then there just wouldn't be enough snakes. Now, the reason it's smaller as well is because not all of the energy is passed up through the food chain or the food web or the, the biomass pyramid. A lot of it is lost. In fact, most of it is. Now, a lot of it can be lost through different things. One of the big ones is movement. All organisms move in some way or form, so they lose energy through that which means there's less for them to pass up. But energy can also be lost through growth. So as we all, you know, we all grow, we go from child to adults. That requires energy to grow the kind of necessary parts. And for some organisms like mammals, we use energy to keep ourselves warm. So we're warm blooded. We are able to keep ourselves warm. But something like a snake probably wouldn't lose much energy through warmth because they use the sun to keep them warm. What this is all to kind of show is this idea that energy is passed up through a food chain. But the higher up the food chain you go, the less energy that's being passed on. Most of the energy is at the very front where the producers are. Now, I'd like to have a little go with this activity. You can jot it down on a bit of paper or print this off if that's possible for you guys. But label each of those levels using the labels below to help you. So I've kind of given you a little bit of help. You did this in the previous session. It's just a slightly different shape for you guys, but it's all things we should be familiar with. If you need to go back and have a look at the previous video, then by all means, take that time to have a look at, look at that. But if you can pause the video for me now and attempt to this activity. Now, you should have it all labelled up similar to mine. Hopefully yours looks a little bit neater or more obvious than mine. If you need to mark it or correct anything, pause the video now to kind of change that. Now, the last task that I'm going to ask you guys to get on with for this little session here is there should be a worksheet or an exam question that I would like you to fill in for me from the Dropbox. The answers will be there as well to have a look at. So take the time to pause the video, answer those exam questions and then mark them for me. And that kind of finishes our session today. Some of the final thoughts to take from this video is the amount of biomass decreases the higher up the pyramid or food chain as you go, as most of it is lost through movement and growth. There are also many factors that can affect the size of a population. So things like disease, the amount of food, predators will all affect how large a population is. There are also questions set for you on Educate that I would like you to complete. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video.